Hi, what is up guys? Jared Campisi with my good buddy Dotto. Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a little while. Christine and I were in California, but we're now back home and we're now back to work. So today we're gonna be working on our Yamaha R1M and I think we're gonna be doing uh, carbon fiber brake lines for the front end and we also have a super light lithium battery for the battery back here. And uh, we're gonna keep rocking and rolling on this beast. Don't forget you can enter to win this bike Patreon.com slash Camp PZ Customs, always the first link in the description below. Let's get this video started. All right, so I think the first thing we're gonna start with is the battery. So in order to do that, we gotta pull the old battery out. I wanna weigh both of these batteries and see how much weight we're saving. I always love doing lithium batteries because it's usually quite a bit of weight savings um, and it's such a little thing and it's really not that expensive. I think it's the best pound for pound, or sorry, dollar for pound um, weight savings that you can do on a bike. I would say lithium battery, um, exhaust system and wheels are pretty much your three biggest weight savers on a motorcycle and then obviously adding carbon fiber parts but um, yeah we're gonna take this thing off then we'll weigh it and then see how much we're saving all right so before we weigh the batteries and unbox the anti-gravity battery we're gonna be replacing it with um, I wanted to let you guys know uh, Mike the guy who won our Street Fighter build is actually selling the bike and he wanted me to mention it in the video so once again I'm not selling this bike I gave this away to someone and now they're selling it and asked me to promote it so people know it's for sale. So this is our 2020 Street Fighter build that we did out in California. Um, he's asking 50000 for it. I would say this bike is easily worth that and more considering that uh, Street Fighter V4 SPs, are, are, people are asking 55 plus for those and they're not as nice as this bike is. So full titanium, Acura exhaust, carbon wheels, carbon everywhere, clear clutch. Uh, I think it has just the carbon uh, rear tail section. It's not a cool, a full rear subframe, but I mean, it's it's decked out. It's an absolutely stunning bike. If you're interested, uh, just go on Cycle Trader. Maybe I'll put the link in the description below. Um, but I think if you message the Cycle Trader, it should go to Mike, which is the one who has it listed, and you can ask him more questions about it over there. So yeah, another bike bites the dust. People who are complaining about the guy who won the Carbon V4 that was selling it. I want you to know about half the bikes that we've given away at one point or another end up being sold because they probably aren't the most practical things to be riding around on the street. Um, and if you don't have a ton of extra money to service them and things like that, sometimes it just makes more sense to sell it and you know, people come on hard times or whatever. So I'm totally fine with that. I just want the bikes to end up in the hands of somebody who actually wants it and wants to ride it. So hopefully it goes to a good home. All right, so today we got Big Titty Big Dotto. Dotto. <laughs> doing the unboxing teens is at home working since we were traveling um for the past week or so we were got a little bit behind on um, our work and contrary to popular belief we do actually do quite a bit of work um they say that in a nine to five job you work 40 hours a week when you're an entrepreneur you work 24 7 pretty much so there you go, anti-gravity. Obviously, huge shout out to Manny from Moto Million for providing all of these parts. If you go to motomillion.com and you order anything, you use code CAMPEASY and that supports us. So here you go. So two things that I, three things that I like about them. One, obviously the weight, and you can mount these however you want mm -hmm. on any application. Two is the factory uh, leads for the battery. Um, that's where the main part of the bike gets hooked up. But if you have any accessories or anything like that, you don't have to keep it's stacking really cool. it on. Yeah. Um, and, and you can mount it either way. Yeah, and then also it has the restart. Which I've used. Mm -hmm. I actually had to use that for the Carbon V4. So the, uh, the bike went dead for some reason, and I was able to get it started when I had to bring it back over here for Dotto to fix that issue we were having with the bike. Look so how much smaller it is. Wow, it is smaller. So, um, oh my God, that is crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's going to be five pounds easily. So and then, uh, let's find out. Oh yeah, you want to talk about the cranking amps yeah. too? The factory has 130 cranking cold, cold cranking, cranking amps. amps, and this one has no, it has 150. Yeah. Let me see this one. This one only has that. That one rating, cranking, not the cranking amps. Yeah. yeah. And the, this one has the other the other one. Yeah. On there, so I don't know. But the nice thing about the lithium batteries as well is you really don't need to have these hooked up to a tender they say that they should last a year between rides. So whereas this could go dead in a few weeks, usually a month or two, um, these can last up to a year. And I've never actually had an issue with one of these dying unless we like had something hooked up to it that was drawing power, which shouldn't normally happen. So you wanna toss this on the uh, scale here and let's find out what we're at here. So let's see. So four, point, four, uh, four pounds, 9.4 ounces. All right, so we're probably gonna save like three pounds. 
It's a pretty small battery to begin with. Oh my god. So about three and a half pounds? I guess three pounds, four ounces, technically. Yeah. So we'll call it three pounds and four ounces. But I mean, dude, that's that's badass. All right, before we get too involved here, we're gonna crack up with some beers. Dado's having a long boards. I'm gonna do a summer shandy. You wanna hold that for me? Ah, it's the best sound in the world. Cheers. All right, so we gotta go with the ugly side up because that's how the terminals face. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I was and wondering they why. They gave you put us little there. foamies, but they don't really do anything at all. Even yeah. if I stick them here, they don't fit right. Yeah. Um, I think that brace that sits over That this, goes over it yeah, will hold it down. Holds everything. Okay. So cool. I'm going to put all the inserts and everything on first. Okay. And then we'll attach it. Mm -hmm. Well, just like everything in here that we do, it's never a simple bolt on. So the new screws don't work with the stock terminals. Is that what Yeah, the is? bolts won't <laughs> go through the terminals. Yeah. So we're just gonna drill them out just a little bit. I don't wanna put the stock stuff back in here because one, Might not um, be long enough. these are a lot nicer quality, yeah. so they will conduct a lot better. Uh -huh. At least I assume they will. These blocks are a lot nicer, and um, I wanna stay with the diameter that's made for the battery yeah. instead of going smaller, Yeah. so you get more contact. Okay, so, so what are we gonna do, drill it? Yep, drill these guys out. All right, here we go. We're gonna get a little bit of shaving, so I'm gonna try to do it on the side here so we can clean it up a lot easier. Some really sharp drill bits here. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> now it went through. He's attaching the terminal. And we should be good to go on that one. Look at the sausage fingers. <laughs> Can't see shit in here, Dotto. Sorry. Is everything good? Perfect. Excellent. All right, repeating the process on the other side. And then we can get this battery attached and we should be good to go. Literally. There you go. Break on through to the other side. Break off to the other side. <laughs> this is the easy part. We started with the easy part today because doing those uh, carbon lines in the front is going to be a bitch. Dad, are you ready for it? Nope. <laughs> All right, we just turn it on and make sure it works and everything looks good. So we should be good to go. Do you um, want to put the cover back on? Yeah, I think we're. Oh, uh, no, because remember, we're still going to bleed, bleed all the brake lines. Right. So let's just throw the seat back on it for now so it looks nicer and then we'll uh, move on. Okay, <clears throat> we already unboxed all this in a separate video, so I'm not going to really show too much of it. But basically, these are what we need to finish. We already did the entire rear setup. We did the rear uh, brakes lines down to the calipers. We did it up to the uh, ABS, and we also did the ABS to the front area as well. So all we have left are just the uh, front lines right here. So it's basically from one caliper to the other caliper, and then from the top here all the way up to the master. So that's what we're gonna be working on here. Um, and the reason why we're not putting the bike back together is because after all of this, <laughs> after all this, we have to do the new rear brake setup, which is a new caliper and new rotor, and it's going to be under slung. Then we have two new calipers for the front brakes as well, along with um, carbon brake cooling ducts. And then after that, once they're all hooked up, then we have to bleed the entire system. And when we do that, we got to make sure that we don't have any leaks anywhere along the system, which is why we're leaving the bike apart. Right? Sure. After that, we can put the bike back together and then take it out for a ride and make sure everything is working properly, which I'm very excited for, unless something breaks while we're riding it, which would suck. Don't say that. So, what are you gonna do? Assess what all we need to get to? Yeah, there's a zip tie I gotta cut up here. Okay. I think I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. Just remove all the stock lines? Okay. Yep. Start. All right. I said I was starting at the top. Uh, <laughs> I lied. We're gonna to, I wanna take those brackets off. Um, I do want to take these off first. I realize we aren't doing um, calipers today. No. So I'm going to take these lines off, drain as much fluid out as I can, and then... Work your way up? Or yes. Oh, work okay. Because you thought we were doing calipers. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So. so these look like they're nicer lines than the back. They aren't rubber, huh? Right. These so, are braided? Yeah. A lot of... That's weird. That a lot of companies that. will upgrade the fronts to steel braided, especially on like... Primo or S models or something yeah. like that. Because I guess that's 70% of your stopping power anyway, right? Like, yeah, or more. You want to explain what you're doing? Yeah, we're going to crack this open and then I'll get a, a pan and drain it in. That's all we need to do there. Okay. Here it comes. Yeah, a little pan. All right, going to drain the fluid now? Yeah, there's really not a great place to put it because it usually just follows the metal. So I'll put it down here like that. Well, there's no fluid now. You yeah. pump it? Yeah. Oh, there it is. 
And then Dada was just explaining why the quality of the lines matters. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you were just saying? Yeah, a lot of a lot of factory lines um, depends on the bike and how old it is, but a lot of them are made of some type of rubber composite, and uh, sometimes nylon, sometimes um, silicone. But all those lines, they tend to either break down prematurely. Uh, also, if you boil your brakes or you get extreme heat on those lines, they can crack, they can expand and blow, they can collapse on themselves. The collapsing I've seen happen the most, uh -huh. and then you get brake failure. So a lot of guys will say, hey, I was on the track, I was riding hard, I pressed the brake and I let it go, but the brakes were still on, or they fade really slowly. Brake like, fade? Yeah. yeah. So, and you don't want that. So you're, you're your actual lever, you have to pull, it like doesn't come out as much each time, is that what it is? It doesn't. So you get yeah. less and less so pull. So think about it, when you, like if, you, if you've got a line and you, there's pressure in this line, right? And that pressure pushes the piston in your caliper uh -huh. to push those brake pads, right? Imagine this thing collapsing or even partially collapsing. Now that pressure's still in there. When you let go of the lever, that pressure's still in that line and it's slowly fading out an opening while you're like, hey. Uh, or you go to press it and this this line expands yeah. and the pressure expands here and doesn't push the fluid onto your caliper. So that's why the quality of these lines matters, even though they're hollow and the and the fluid's traveling inside them. Mm -hmm. The quality of that line so matters. So braided will protect it from a lot of things. UV exposure, from an expanding, contracting, collapsing, kinking, yep. you know, all that stuff. So if you, you go like that to that line. We keep the kinking in the bedroom, yeah, huh? Yeah, we'll do the kinkiness here, but if you take a rubber line, this is just to show you, yeah, like, it'll, it'll just collapse and, yeah. and bend. I think that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So we're gonna drain the rest of this fluid out of this, and then we'll keep on with our disassembly. And all he's doing is just pushing it to get the fluid out, right? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna repeat the process on the other side now, remove the bracket, then we're gonna pull off the actual line itself, drain everything. We do have a speed sensor wire on this side, which I think we're just gonna, what, pretty much move out of the way. I think it just stays, there's a couple of clips yeah. that hold it up. Oh, okay, so it's actually run separately. I thought it was running through the same clips, okay. So yeah, we're just gonna repeat the process on this on this side, drain everything, and then we'll keep going. All right, breaking it loose right now. I'm gonna hold that, I got you. Letting it drain, he's gonna do the same thing. Go pump the brake again and shoot out the rest of this stuff. Very corrosive, so you wanna make sure that if it does get on things, you just wipe it off. Mm -hmm. Or just lick your fingers. Or lick it. <laughs> we got a big ass light down there too, so I apologize if it's super bright, but we need to be able to see way up in there where everything connects. All right, Dado's removing the coolant reservoir, overflow, I should say. Yeah, this will just make it easier because it opens everything up. Yeah, that's perfect. So, what are you gonna do? You, you took a bunch of photos of this? Yeah, if you look up at the top, there's two hard lines. That's the toughest part of this entire thing. Yeah. It's trying to get that. Because you gotta attach it all uh, back in there yeah. to that line. And I have really big hands. So. Yeah. But basically what he's gonna do, I think, is take all this off, rebuild the new setup, just so it looks just like the stock setup, and then attach the, the new setup back in there like that. Is that the idea? Yep. <laughs> okay, let's crack open some beers. <laughs> First bolt he went for, which is right there, he said was finger tight, it wasn't even tightened. We, knew, we never even We never touched it. that. No. That's crazy. That's very disappointing. Uh-huh. So this should hold this little block, and then this guy. Comes right off. There's this a sensor. Is crazy. Once again, something we've never done before. Move this. So I hope you guys are appreciating some different content because so far, a lot of this stuff hasn't really been getting much views. When people are like, "Why don't you do crazy stuff, man?" It's because well, there you go. It's a lot of work, and unfortunately, it doesn't get all the doesn't get a lot of views. All right. So I got one line, this hard line, disconnected up here, and okay. I did take this other line off here. Uh huh. Um, this line goes to the top to the master so it's the main line yeah. coming from the top so yeah. before i take these two lines off here which are almost off yeah. we just have the top uh hard line to take off and that's it i want to take this um the line coming down from the brake completely master. off yeah take this off and then reroute the new one down oh okay that's smart so we got uh, cut that zip tie yeah got the zip tie there and I just talked to Manny, he's gonna send us the entire handlebar upgrade as well. So that'll be coming. We have, we still have, I mean we're getting close. My goal is to get this finished probably middle of next month would be my guess. We're in July right now, so probably August. 
And then I'm thinking, it seems like everybody's really excited about doing an M1, Christina's M1000 RR. So I'm thinking that's probably what we're gonna do next, which uh, I think will be badass, because I've never seen anyone do a build with one of those, or let alone give one away, so. All right, I'm getting thirsty watching Dado do all this work, so I'm gonna do some monkey shoulder. You asshole. And we're gonna smoke this shit. And don't, that good? yeah, that's perfect. And don't forget guys, Dado has some really cool new products along with his uh, tried and trusted smoking, smoking kits and they're always linked in the description below. <laughs> yeah. It's just DadoMadeShop.com and he's also doing a like cool thing right now, promotion where... I am, but it's probably gonna be already gone by the, by the time they see this. So yeah. I decided to give back a little bit. I, yeah. I reached a lot of milestones and a lot of goals for my shop since I launched it. So I was like, I'll give back a little bit. So I took like five orders and I'm gonna... He said the next five orders, yeah. one of them, he's gonna give the order for free. But yeah, so like yeah. I'm literally gonna pay for that order out of yeah. pocket. You just cover shipping. So there you, like, go. you can spend five grand on my website Ooh. and literally if I choose your number, I literally pay yeah. for it. And that's that's dope. Feel like so if that's still going on otherwise I mean support right now, regardless left. yeah there there's you go one spot left so it'll probably be gone by the but, time this still, goes up but still I might do it again I there you go again. So there you go something you guys want, yeah comment I think that's it. super cool um so watch so this we got some uh oak wood chips are we doing oak uh, today soaked in brake oak fluid. With monkey yeah. fluid or the monkey shoulder I should say monkey fluid. I don't know I'm all fucked up so this is gonna be so this is what you do. Yeah, it's me. really fun when you have people over, like house guests and things, and you start smoking stuff. I mean, it's like, I've never had anyone not see this and be just totally amazed, because it's just not something you see that often. Look at that. That's a little overdue, you know, a, little, a little too much, but. That's fine, that's what we do here. So anyway, pick up yourself a smoking kit, get yourself a little lid to cover it up, and join the smoking crew. <laughs> All right, he's loosening the last hard line. There it is. Look at that. That was a bitch to get to. Yeah, if you guys um, are planning on doing this just for shits and giggles, don't. <laughs> the the <laughs> brake line upgrades are a bitch. serious yeah. as far as an upgrade, but they are a bitch. Yeah. Like, unless I was tracking or doing some insane braking, I would not do this. Yeah. The bracket that, I wanted to show that, the bracket that holds everything, I actually bent it out of the way because the bolt that holds it, you have to drop the entire radiator down to get the <laughs> to bolt. Get to it. So I bent this down, I'm gonna just bend the back and look at these yeah. two lines. Yeah. They're right next to each other. Yep. And you have to put And them they in. don't move, so it's not like you can move it out of the way to get to the other one. Yeah, and you have to put it in sequence. Well, now, now we gotta rebuild it. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to mention a couple of things that I noticed. Um, obviously a little bit different design, but if you look inside there, um, the hole on the aftermarket setup is a lot bigger, uh -huh. so the brake fluid will flow a lot better uh -huh. through there than this, but oh, I see. it okay. retains the same size yeah. fittings. Or, Interesting. Yeah. And then the only thing that I don't like is that these come out straight and they're not bent down, mm. uh, where these are bent down, so this is going to stick out a little bit, yeah. but fine little details, yeah. you know. Um, and then we have these fittings at the ends here, and what we need to do is... Swap them out? Actually, He put, sent us... Yeah, put these guys on there. The other ones, yeah. So, we gotta figure them out. I'm not gonna tighten anything down until um, we put the calipers on. Yeah. Okay, so he took off the stock fittings that these came with, put on the new ones that Manny sent us, and now, we're gonna show him what it came with. Yeah, it came with these. It's just a generic filler, I think. No, it's a, it's a threaded, <laughs> <laughs> generic filler. <laughs> I don't know. It's a male to male threaded piece that fits in here and then you can add different ends on there but uh, Manny sent us these banjo bolts that are male so they thread right in there. Oh okay. So we don't have a bunch of fittings on top of each other. Yeah. Uh, plus all these are interchangeable with other applications with other motorcycles so I'm assuming that we're gonna have a little bit of hardware left over but we'll see. So what's next? Putting those in there? Back this up. Is, this is the dreaded part I didn't want to do. Uh -huh. um, we have to fit this up underneath the bike, and we have that little bit of like this fitting is literally like maybe not even half inch away from the radiator, and yeah. it does not move. It's a hard fitting, so we have to thread that in here and tighten it hard enough for it not to leak. Sounds like more whiskey. <laughs> so we got the first one attached. He's just doing it by hand in there with his big Sasha's fingers, and then. After he gets this one, are you gonna tighten this one all the way down? 
Uh, I'm going to crank it down and I might need a hand. So yeah. the easiest way to do it up in here, some people use like up vice. Up in here? <laughs> some people use vice grips or whatever. I think if you hold these metal pieces on the sides and, yeah. and hold on to them, kind of like handles, you can get this uh, cranked down enough uh, with enough torque to get at the seat on there. Uh -huh. Cause it's a, it's a flared fitting. You don't want to be too loose, you don't want to be too tight, so that's one of those things that you got to get it just right. And then after that, we can move on to the one that runs up to the master? Yeah, I'm going to finish taking that one off. Oh, okay. Um, we still got to do that. Yeah, too. it's a nightmare there. That line right there. Okay. All right, so Dotto's been doing stuff. I've been holding lights, kind of <laughs> trying to help as much as I possibly can. But he basically got all of the new lines connected. He still does have the stock line that goes up to the master sitting right there in our faces right there. Um, but I think he's got everything connected and now he's just basically tightening everything down. So it's kind of boring stuff, but it's boring, but it's our lives. <laughs> this, this is a freaking nightmare. Yeah, it's, uh, he's had to come up with some clever ways to get this to work while having the radiator attached. So yeah, this is uh, pretty intense. So, and then we just gotta pray that it actually doesn't leak after we do all this. If it leaks, I'm just gonna give the bike away. And don't, you don't really need don't brakes care. if you um, don't ride the bike. If you downshift hard enough. There you go, engine braking for the win. Okay, so ignore this, because that's gonna come out of there, but you can see the other setup. Everything's tightened down. It looks phenomenal. We don't have the master for the brake yet, so there's no point to unattach this because we're still gonna do a rear brake upgrade, a front brake upgrade for the calipers and everything like that. And then once we have the masters, we'll hook all that up, then we have to bleed the whole system, which is why we're gonna leave the bike apart. So I think that's a good place to stop, don't you think? Yeah, I noticed this was yeah. made in PA. Nuh-uh. Oh, I don't know what that stands for, oh, that's funny. It says PA on it. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a good place to stop. Again, very technical video, probably not the most fun for you guys to watch, but hopefully you learned something. There you go. It's gonna go in a different area once we put the new calipers on, but there you go. We have full carbon fiber braided brake lines for the entire bike. No one, I, if, if, if you can't say this isn't a one of one at this point, come on, get out of here. To the people who always right? complain, that's not one of one. Well, send link in pictures yep. to who has exactly set up. And yeah. Then we'll like, say that it isn't. That's, that is yeah. one of two. <laughs> but that's it. So I think that's where we're going to stop. So again, huge shout out to Manny from Moto Million for providing all these amazing parts. Use code Camp Easy to get parts for your bikes. Big shout out to the Sausage Fingers for always crushing the work, making it look easy. And thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget, if you want to help support this project and be entered to win this bike when we're done, patreon.com slash campeasy customs. It's always the first link in the description below. We probably have about a month left on this build. And then we will be giving this bike away. And we're probably going to be adding Christina's M1000RR to the build as well. And once we do, you'll be getting double entries, not only for this, but also for the M1000RR. So big things coming on this channel. Again, we're going to Ducati. Uh, World Ducati week as well. We're shopping for new supercars. A lot of fun stuff going on. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And we'll see you all in the next one. Peace.